you're on. Hi, this is the fifth video in the series for intubation, and I've got Diane here helping me with ventilation uh, with the patient. So the, you can assume the patient's airway by this point in time has been established with an oropharyngeal airway, and manual ventilation is taking place with the patient. So while that's going on, and the patient's airway is being looked after, now what we can do is we can get ready to do the intubation. And the first thing we need to do is get all our equipment ready, set up, and checked, and prepped. And then once we've got all that done, then we can put the tube in. And hopefully we'll be successful. And as respiratory therapists, you know we are. So the first thing we're going to do is get our equipment ready. How you start this process is entirely up to you. But just make sure everything that you need for intubation is in fact set up and good to go. So one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to check my suction because I know I'm going to have to clean out the patient's airway, remove the secretions from the upper airway so I can visually see the patient's larynx and the structures that are required for intubation. So I'm going to get my suction going. I'm going to turn my suction regulator onto full line or full vacuum pressure and turn it on as well. I'm also going to grab my tonsil, oropharyngeal, yonker, whatever you want to call it, suction so I can clean out the back of the airway with my suction device and confirm that it works by including the thumb control port. Don't forget about the thumb control port if it has one. That's what determines or controls the suction at the distal tip here. So I've got my suction ready, it's good to go. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my syringe. I'm going to grab an endotracheal tube. So I've got a variety of sizes over here. The one I'm going to insert is going to be a number or a size 8 endotracheal tube. First thing I want to do with my endotracheal tube is I want to check the cuff to ensure that it is functional as well as the pilot balloon line. So I'm going to take some gas into my syringe and I'm going to place the gas inside the cuff. And you can kind of see the cuff looks pretty good. It's fairly uniform. It doesn't look like it's got any breaks in it anyway or tears. So I'm going to squeeze the cuff and I'm also going to feel the pilot balloon line. And I should be able to feel increasing pressure with my fingers and my pilot balloon when I squeeze the cuff. Vice versa, I'm going to take my pilot balloon, I'm going to squeeze it and I should feel a little bit of pressure inside my cuff. That tells me that I've got an intact system from my pilot balloon all the way to my cuff. At that point in time I can take the gas out of my cuff because I know that it is, inta it is intact. So get the air out of your cuff, like so, just remove it. You can shape the cuff as well. There. So all the air has been taken out of my cuff. It's nice and thin, aids in the insertion of the of tracheal tube. At this point in time, I'm going to precharge my syringe to around 8 to 10 cc's of gas. You could also probably use a little bit less. I've got my syringe ready for use. I'm going to grab my lubricant. Now, obviously, in the hospital, you're going to use muco or whatever kind of water based lubricant they have to uh, help ease the insertion of the tube into the patient's airway. Lubricate the distal tip. Grab your stylet. Make sure the distal end of the stylet does not protrude outside of your endotracheal tube. How's ventilation going, Diane? Very well, thank you. That's great. So place the stylet inside, make sure again that it does not protrude out the distal end of your endotracheal tube, and simply give your stylet a little bit of a bend at the end. It doesn't have to be anything too aggressive, something like that. All this bend does is helps to direct the distal end of the endotracheal tube towards the patient's trachea. So I've got my endotracheal tube ready, I've got my syringe ready. The next thing I need to do is attach or check out my laryngoscope and make sure I've got the right size blade. Now with this patient, I'm going to use the Macintosh blade, it's a number three Macintosh, fiber optic blade with fiber optic laryngoscope handle. To ensure that it's the right size, simply take the blade, go to the earlobe with the patient with the tip and make sure that this portion here sits outside the patient's mouth. Should be the correct size. I'm going to attach the blade to the handle in this fashion, turn it on, and confirm that I've got battery power to illuminate the light source. So it's working, I'm going to shut it off. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my tapes, the ones that I made earlier, I'm going to place them underneath the patient's neck. And don't forget, you're going to be doing this on a patient, so you want to be talking to your patient, telling them what you're doing so that they're not alarmed and they're not too uh, 
shocked by the things that you're going to do. And a lot of times your patients aren't going to be conscious, but still talk to them anyways. Another thing that I also want to have take place is once we have the patient intubated and we're ventilating the patient, we'll want to attach to our manual resuscitator our peep valve with the peep diverter on it onto the dagger, as well as our inline suction system, our closed suction system. So we've got to have those ready to go as well. Now, positioning the patient is fairly important. You want to make sure that your patient happens to be in the sniffing position. So to facilitate that, we're going to grab, I'll be back in a second, don't go anywhere. <laughs> I'm back. You have a couple of blue pads. Place the patient in the sniffing position. And if you remember that mantra uh, that we were talking about in class, when, you, when it comes to intubation, you want to always hyperoxygenate and ventilate your patient, then do something. Hyperoxygenate and ventilate your patient, then do something. Hyperoxygenate or ventilate your patient, and then... Do something. Do something, exactly. So we've got the patient's airway established. The first thing we want to do is we want to clean out the airway so we can see the back of the pharynx, we can see the larynx without having any kind of obstructions in the way. So when Diane's ready, pull out the OPA, suction out the back of the pharynx. I'm putting the tonsil suction, oral suction, as far back as I can see. I'm suctioning the airway out, now it's nice and clean. The OPA goes back in and ventilation resumes. And I always keep my suction handy and my suction running. Running on empty, running on. We, we blew a lung. We blew a lung? Oh, we blew a lung. We did blow a lung. Huh. You should have been a surgeon. Not a sturgeon, but a surgeon. Maybe next career choice. There you go. One other thing that you want to have to aid in confirming that you've got your endotracheal tube in the correct spot is one of these CO2 adapters. So I've already attached that to the tapered flex tube, if we're using this one. Now because we're using the oral, um, or sorry, the closed inline suction system, I'm going to grab that. I'm going to place this in line with my suction. So it's all good to go for bagging. There's our tapered flex tube. Five second rule. There's our tapered flex tube. There's our CO2 detection device. And there's our closed suction system, our inline suction. So Diana will attach this to the bagger once you've got the patient intubated. The next thing we're going to do with the intubation procedure. We've got the airway cleaned out, the patient's been hyperoxygenated and ventilated. We're going to go and apply our topical anesthetic, tap, topical analgesic. There's a couple of ways that you can do this. The first way is to simply look inside the patient's airway once the OPA is removed and spray the structures of the larynx beyond the base of the tongue without visually seeing them. Okay. So we're going to place some topical analgesic inside. Spray, 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 up to 10 sprays. Remove it, place the OPA in, resume ventilation. So, hyperoxygenate and ventilate, do something. Hyperoxygenate and ventilate, do something. So we're done with this, we shouldn't have to use this again. At this point in time, now I'm ready to do the actual intubation. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna show you how to intubate the patient in the next video.